These daily briefings from the White House are a litany of things from the president that would be awesome if they were true, if they were happening, but they're not. And so the sooner we come to terms with that, I think the better for all of us. If it were up to me, and it's not, I would stop putting those briefings on live TV. Not out of spite, but because it's misinformation. Well, since it's Sunday, can I give Sister Rachel an amen? Amen. Because like Rachel and all of us here at MSNBC, I watch Donald Trump's briefing so that you don't have to. And it's hard to escape a simple and sobering fact about those briefings. Almost nothing that Trump says in those briefings is true. He even once falsely claimed the FDA approved a malaria drug for coronavirus treatment. The FDA had to quickly release a statement post-briefing clearing up Trump's, what are we calling it, error, mistake, made up thing that was in his head. Trump also forced actual knowledgeable experts like Dr. Tony Fauci to play cleanup for him. And his daily briefing, the lies in it are not just irritants, they're dangerous. Trump's followers believe him. They believe anything he says. And the things that he's saying put them in danger. The false hopes that he's feeding to Americans put us all in danger. And it's clear that this man is simply not capable of telling the truth, or he's just determined not to. So it's fair for you, those of you out there, to ask, why are we giving him national airtime to lie to us in the midst of a global pandemic crisis? Because what's clear is that Trump seems to need these pressers for him. It's not an original thought at all. But to paraphrase many, many, many people who've noted this, they seem to be his substitute for his rallies where he can lather himself in the praise of everyone around him that they're forced to do while standing too close to him on the dais. They seem required to serve it up and he seems to need it. While he can bathe in the reflected glory of actual experts like Dr. Fauci. So the question is, why are we continuing to do it? And I I, I would like you to imagine just for a moment what it would look like for just one moment if it was not Donald Trump, but it was Barack Obama, President Barack Obama, standing up there doing these briefings and making things up and not being able to back it up with facts, how would they treat him? You don't even have to imagine that because A, Barack Obama wouldn't have done that and didn't do that, but let's take a look at the way that the former president, Barack Obama, was treated when it was not a pandemic, but the ACA, the Affordable Care Care Act website, it went live, and it didn't quite work. Here is how he was treated by the media. You know, that's on me. I mean, uh, we fumbled the rollout on this healthcare law. Do you feel as though the flawed healthcare rollout has led to a breach in the public trust and confidence in government? And if so, how do you plan to resolve that? You hear criticism on the Hill that you and your White House team are too insolent. Is that how this mess came to be. You said while the law was being debated, if you like your plan, you can keep it. You said after the law was implemented or signed, if you like your plan, you can keep it. Americans believed you, sir, when you said that to them over and over. Do you not believe, sir, the American people deserve a deeper, more transparent accountability from you as to why you said that over and over? Joining me now is Jennifer Rubin, opinion writer at The Washington Post. Kurt Bardella, Think contributor at NBC News, David Korn of Mother Jones, author of Russian Roulette, MSNBC contributor Gabriel Sherman, who's the author of The Loudest Voice in the Room, and Republican media strategist Rick Wilson, author of Running Against the Devil. So subtle with his titles, that Rick Wilson. (laughs) Uh, Gabriel Sherman, (laughs) <laughs> Let me go to you first uh, for your reporting on this, because it, yeah. it's it's just an outside looking in observation that Donald yeah. Trump seems to have substituted the rallies that fed yeah. him emotionally with this with these briefings. Is there any other reason he's doing them? Yeah, it's a great question, Joy. You know, from my sources who are in touch with the White House, uh, several uh, people have told me that one of the things that is driving this is that the president has been furious and frustrated at uh, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, who has been holding these very widely uh, well-received more early morning press conferences and, in the president's view, has sort of hijacked the news cycle. And so now you see Trump, you know, taking the stage after Cuomo, trying to take back the mantle. And unfortunately, he's doing that with misinformation. So 
uh, uh, we're in a situation where the president's narcissism and his need to be at the center of every story, even though the story is not about Donald Trump, this story is about a global pandemic, is what is driving the White House's communication strategy. I had a, a senior former West Wing official tell me that the president needs to be his own press secretary, and that is what's driving this. Yeah, I mean, Queens versus Brooklyn jealousy is, you know, real cute and clever, you know, in like the hip hop back and forth every so often. This is absurd. He's mad that another New Yorker is getting the stage. So he has to clamber onto the stage and pretend to be an expert in drug therapies. It's absolutely unimaginable. Um